You need to practice for your technical interviews in the future, and doing so now can help you learn your CCNA material. In this video, I'll pose some of those questions about how LAN switching works in the presence of VLANs and VLAN trunks. Also, don't forget to stick around to the end when I'm going to pose a follow-up question, just like you'd see in a real interview. All right, let's get into it. So let's say you walk into a technical interview and there's a drawing like this on the dry erase board next to you. And the interviewer is going to start talking to you. They say, hey, I just need to know what you do and don't know. It'll also let me know how well you can explain things to people and converse with people. So talk to me about how switches forward frames in the network you see here. And in particular, focus on how VLANs affect what the switches do. All right, seems like a reasonable question. It's somewhat open-ended, but you've got a concrete example to work from. So you have to think about things like, hey, those bottom ports, are they access ports? They probably are. There aren't any VLANs in the figure, so you could follow up and ask questions like, do you care which VLANs I use? Do you care if they're all in the same VLAN or not? You know, that kind of thing. They might have you pick, and you could pick some, and that'll impact your answer. They just want to figure out what you know. And one way interviewers can do that is to leave you some flexibility to see if you can think through the problem. All right, so that's a good thing to do is to think a little more abstractly when you're not told exactly every bit of detail. All right, but I'm going to paint a story for you and give you three specific questions to answer. For instance, the interviewer you might ask, they say, oh, these are all layer two switches. None of them are doing layer three switching. If you're following the book and videos in sequence, we haven't talked about that really much yet, but... That's something you'll learn in the not too distant future. But here are the questions I'm gonna to pose to you for you to answer more specifically so we can manage this in video format. Are there any trunks? Does the network need any trunks? And explain why trunks would be needed or not in this design. All right, so that's your first one. And then flooding, I want you to, to describe for me, person being interviewed, where frames will be flooded, frames sent by PC 11, 12, 21, and 22, as they're sent into the network. All right, so if a frame needed to be flooded, say it's a broadcast sent by each one. Where and why would they be flooded, where they're flooded? And then finally, 3A and B, it's like, what are the switch decisions about how to assign a VLAN to a frame? So a frame comes in, what VLAN is it in? And talk through that on every link, and it gives two examples, PC12 sending to PC22, and then PC21 sending to PC11. All right, that's the setup. You can hit pause and think about it and go do that. So what are the rules here about how to proceed? Well, your interview instructions, you can talk to yourself. It really is beneficial to find a quiet place where you're not disturbing others and talk out loud. You can speak to any others. Talk to your spouse, talk to your kids, talk to your parents, etc., etc. Talk to a colleague. You could write your answer if that works for you. Just want you to think it through, but get to the point where you're putting words on it, not just thinking ideas, but voicing it. You can post to a form. I give you permission to take an image of what we just showed with the questions and the diagram and post it anywhere online to generate a discussion. I just ask that you link to this video if you do so. That's the only requirement. Then, to give a little more context, we've got these VLANs added. I would say for the purpose of this discussion, imagine the interviewer has answered the question and said, hey, I want to use VLANs 1 and 2 for those devices down at the bottom. And then you might have replied to say, well, I think trunking is needed. Now, you can explain that in your interview, but if that's what you decide, then you can explain why trunking is needed. But the use of VLANs 1 and 2 at the bottom, let's say that's a dead requirement so that I can match that up in my explanations coming up here in just a second. All right. Overarching goals, strive for accuracy, using terminology, and then clarity. You want the other person to understand you and use the right terms. All right. So hit pause and go do it if you haven't already, and then you can come back and we'll talk about it. So last chance to hit pause to do this interview for yourself before you watch the video. So here's the countdown, last chance before I launch in. Here we go. All right, question one, the question is, are any trunks needed? Now, 
if I'm holding the interview or if I'm your colleague and we're just reviewing it informally later, which is, you know, maybe a more chill way to think of it. And I say, hey, do you need to be you know, need to be using trunking there? Do those links need to trunk between D1 and switches A1 and A2? And you say, well, yeah, we should have trunks there. And you, you know, draw something that makes me think that. And I say, why? And you just say, well, you always trunk between switches. Then I would say, well, okay, that's, that's good, but that's not a great answer. So why? Why do you need to trunk there? And I've summarized the reasons over there in that bullet list on the right. So a LAN is a set of devices for which each device can send unicast frames to each other device and for which a broadcast is delivered to all the other devices in the LAN. So a virtual LAN is the same thing, but a subset of devices and ports as created through configuration. So a configured LAN, if you will. So why do I bring that up now? Well, think about the topology here where I said, hey, those PCs at the bottom, their ports are assigned to VLANs 1 and 2, as you see in the drawing. So there are two, two VLANs in use down there on switch A1, and there are two VLANs in use down there on switch A2. But there's only one link there between each access switch and the distribution switch, D1. So each of those links has to support at least two VLANs, the two we know about at least. So the only way to support traffic from more than one VLAN on the same link is to use trunking. So that's the kind of logic I would hope to have heard if I was interviewing someone on that particular question. Next, let's talk about question two from PC12's perspective. That's the question of flooding a broadcast frame. So the flooding logic says, forward the frame out all ports in the same VLAN, that is the VLAN to which the frame was assigned. Now, that's one way to think of it, but another is what's written in the bullet points. Send out all ports except the incoming ports. So PC12 sends this frame in, switch A1 won't forward the frame back out that same port, and then forward it out all ports except access ports in some other VLAN. So not out this port on the left. So where will it go? Go over this trunk up to switch D1, down this trunk to switch A1. Now the frame came in on a port in VLAN 2, so we'll flood out that port in VLAN 2 over to PC22, but not in this port that's assigned to VLAN 1 because of this logic over here, right? So all the ports in the same VLAN are going to have that frame forwarded out of those. So hopefully that's a relatively straightforward concept at this point. Um, it helps though if you think about the switch logic that's used to assign the VLAN to a frame. So PC12 sent the frame. It's an access port in VLAN 2. So the switch A1 assigns that frame to VLAN 2. That's why switch A1 forwards in VLAN 2 and D1 has to go through that thinking and A2 has to go through that thinking and the content video related to this review video talks about that quite a bit. I'm not going to show you all four PCs sending a broadcast but just to show one more we'll answer question two for PC21 again. PC21 sends a frame in. A2 thinks the frame enters a port in VLAN 1 so he treats that frame as if it's part of VLAN 1, so he won't forward out this right-hand port connected into VLAN 2, but it will forward out this trunk link that supports all VLANs forward down here. And remember the frame's in VLAN 1, so it would have been tagged as VLAN 1 coming down that trunk. So forwarded in VLAN 1 there, but not forwarded at all in VLAN 2. Now questions 3A and 3B are really asking the interviewee to drill down on how switches think about VLANs and VLAN trunks, all right? So taking 3A, which is PC12 sending to PC22 for a moment. When PC12 sends that frame in, walk through the logic in your head as the frame enters that switch and is forwarded out the switch and likewise enters the next switch and is forwarded and enters the next switch and is forward, right? Because it's going to go through all three switches. And so the text on the right matches what I'm about to say to you. But as it enters A1, A1 says it comes in an access port. It's assigned to VLAN 2. I use the configuration to see that it's VLAN 2. 
the frame as part of VLAN 2 I'm forwarding in VLAN 2. When it sends the frame out this trunk, because clearly that's the only way it's going to be delivered over to PC22, it's tagged with a VLAN header and it has VLAN 2 in the header to signify that it's part of VLAN 2. So when the frame arrives in this trunk port on D1, it has slightly different logic, right? An incoming port on a trunk port, it's assigned to VLAN 2 because of the trunk header in the frame that says VLAN 2. Now, when this frame is forwarded, it's also going out of a trunk, so we want to maintain that VLAN trunking header in the frame that lists VLAN 2. So when it sends it out, knowing that it's a trunk, it's still tagged with that extra header that lists VLAN 2. Now finally, the frame enters switch A2 down here, and this is something I would definitely be watching for if I was interviewing someone to see if you had a complete and full understanding, and that's this. The frame comes in a trunk, so it sees the assigned VLAN 2 per the trunking header, but we've got to remove that tag, right? So before forwarding out here, we're going to forward, but there's no VLAN tag in the frame as it's forwarded out here on this last link down to PC22. Now next up, there's something I would listen for that I would give bonus points for. So if the interviewee brought up the fact that said, hey, these trunks are using default native VLAN 1, and I'm going to tell you about that as I talk through this, and then they include that in the discussion, I'd say, great, they are all over this. So here's the deal. We've got PC21 sending a frame to PC11. They're both in access ports in VLAN 1. So as the frame enters switch A2, A2 says it's an access port. It's assigned to VLAN 1 per port config. So it says it sent out the trunk to D1, and here's the bonus points. There's no VLAN tag in that frame. Why? Because VLAN 1 is the de default native VLAN on a trunk port. And if the interviewee said, hey, we're using the default native VLAN of 1, then we know this frame that's sent up toward the top, it's on a trunk, but there's no VLAN tag. So it enters the top, and then we have that different kind of logic on switch D1. Hey, it's a trunk port but it has no VLAN tag, so I use the native VLAN configured on the port as the VLAN to assign to the frame, so that's VLAN 1, and again, we've got a trunk. It's forwarded with no VLAN tag because that's the native VLAN on that trunk. Frame comes in A1, assigned to the native VLAN because there's no VLAN tag on the trunk. So this is an opportunity for you to have talked through the concepts of the native VLAN and how tagging works. So hopefully you did that. If you didn't, think through that and take another crack at it because that's probably the trickiest thing in this particular interview review. So how about a follow-up question? This is something that would happen all the time in a technical interview. So what if the interviewer said to you, hey, would a router be useful here and why? Now, let me tell you up front, if you're following the videos in order and that's all you've learned, then we've only talked about this like a minute, all right? So I hesitated to bring up this follow-up question to you, but give it a try, see what you can remember, and see what you can talk through, and then as you learn more, we'll revisit the idea, all right? So do you need a router or not? So you got five seconds here to hit pause and go off and practice with that interview question. All right, let's get into it. You do need routing if you want all the PCs to be able to try to communicate. And this gets back to the idea of saying, by design, we put some hosts in one VLAN, some in the other. We still want there to be a path for them to communicate, but we're gonna force that through a router. So the most basic conceptual way to think of it is, let's attach a router to the switch. And in order to support two VLANs, the simplest conceptual way to do it, which is not how you'd really do it in real life for 20 years now. But the concept would be, have a router, it's got one of its interfaces connected to a switch port that's assigned to one of the VLANs and another physical port that's connected to switch D1 assigned to the second of those VLANs. So now, traffic in VLAN 1 could flow in this link 
and get sent back out in VLAN 2 as the router does its routing processes. So I showed you a similar figure oriented 90 degrees over on the need for router. And honestly, if I knew that's where you were in your studies, that's about all I would expect from you at this point. But just to give you a smidge more to think about is this, hey, that was one design and I kind of harped on the fact that the simplest way conceptually is a router with multiple interfaces. Well, you guessed it. You could take that router with one physical interface and make it a trunk. Right, one link that supports multiple VLANs. It takes a little more configuration on the router and the switch, but now one link, multiple VLANs, and you'll hear that called router on a stick, kind of a cool name. You'll still see that out in the wild today, but there are two or three other alternatives as well, depending on the design. And in the volume one book, we've got a whole chapter devoted to that. And I'll have videos here over time as I get to that content while I'm rolling out content. So stay tuned for that. Hey, you know the drill, it's YouTube. So give us a subscribe and click the bell if you're new to the channel. And for anyone, love to hear your comments, love to get your likes, and love for you to share the video for others so they can learn too. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Talk to you later.